Greetings, brothers and sisters in the Lord, to all the good citizens of the ambassadors of the Christian faith, and to all of our viewers. Welcome to week 31 of our oral Bible reading. Let us begin with prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the good things you've given us, for all your blessings, Lord, and all that you've done for our lives, Lord. We praise you and thank you and bless you. And we ask that you bless this time together of our oral Bible reading. God bless all my brothers and sisters in the Lord and bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. This week's message is I heard a voice speaking, and our three reference scriptures are Matthew 13, 16, Luke 3, 21 and 22, and John 12, 27 through 30. Let us turn in our Bibles to Matthew 13, 16. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Our next reference scripture is Luke 3, 21 and 22. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized, and while he was praying, Heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came out of heaven, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. And our third reference scripture is John 12, 27-30. Now my soul has become troubled, and what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying, that it had thundered. Others were saying, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice has not come for my sake, but for your sakes. Okay, let's close our Bibles. Before we begin, I would like to give a short sermon on today's message. I heard a voice speaking. Communication and relationships throughout time have shaped and formed our societies. When we think of man as an individual, we see the individual as ourselves. That is, if human beings are sensitive towards each other due to their own human sufferings, the moment we first sense our emotions, the sensation of touch and the feeling of our skin on our bodies, we develop a realization of ourselves. When we were children, the first time we opened our eyes and saw the world outside our homes, it filled us with questions and we sought answers that we couldn't even begin to ask. The sensation of a cool or warm breeze blowing against our skin gives us awareness. 
It fills us with a sense of awe and wonder that in itself, just being a human being with our feelings that we all experience have changed our outlook on life. We each have different ways of dealing with society and form relationships with people we feel connected to, which also aligns with our social attitudes. I think there must be some underlying thing within us all that we want to achieve as individuals but I can probably say that it has to do with what would benefit ourselves also as individuals. It's important to think about our perspective and what we hope to accomplish in life. But what we want out of life doesn't always match our desires in the things we put into our lives. Sometimes the way things are is something we are unable to change. My faith in God is the source of hope for me, even though I cannot change everything in my life. The pursuit of happiness involves life, love, and happiness. You might want to have this perspective. Dream the dreams that you want to dream. Shoot for the stars, and you'll go far. We know that comfort and rest, peace and joy, health and science, and life and death are things we have all taken into consideration. Whatever makes you happy may not be what makes you happy if you're searching for immortality. It just isn't going to happen, not overnight. And remember, there are sometimes things in life that we just can't change. So we're faced with this thing called reality, and we begin to get the big picture. Your goal should be to create a picture for yourself that is perfect for you. In a picture, perfect world where your dreams are all fulfilled and your goals are all achieved. Common sense is not the only way to know what the truth is, and reality and truth are not the same. The Bible says, tell the truth and the truth will set you free. Trust your emotions and experience a sense of the deepest feeling of your whole existence. Feel the deepest emotions of your life. If we don't have an understanding, we can't always trust common sense. Have you ever thought about what is the underlying relationship of your own emotions? That's just you being you. But you know you have to be honest with yourself if you want to be happy. If you want to be happy, you probably know that you cannot lie to yourself. That's what your inner voice should be telling you if you trust your emotions and experience that deep down feeling of your whole existence. The Bible tells us that we have a soul, and our soul is our mind, heart, and spirit. Listening is a part of hearing, but hearing comes first. In life, we must make decisions, and we all want to have a better understanding to make and base our decisions on. A direct connection is necessary to guide us and lead us along life's journey. The shape of our character is determined by our conscience, and when we listen to it, we feel a sense of relief or even pleasure. Our emotions are a reflection of our conscience and help us understand ourselves. 
Our personality develops as a result of our character. Trust your emotions and let your conscience be your guide. Develop your personality by getting in tune, walking this way, and building your character. Get into the groove and come to know and love the truth today. Have you listened to the inner still voice in your inner man? Do you believe anything in the Bible? When you begin to read the Bible, even if it is just one page, you learn about God and he speaks through his word. Jesus is God's son and he said this, blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Hearing is an active process that requires our senses. Active listening involves taking in the words, processing them, and acting on them. The greatest blessing of life is to know God, and he wants us to know him. God created the heavens and the earth and all that is within them. Is it possible for us to hear the voice of God? The Bible is the written word of God. Be honest and true to yourself by using your own character. Go ahead. You can trust your emotions and feelings. Did you get that deep down feeling of your whole existence yet? I heard a voice speaking and my conscience called me from within my emotions. I get a sense of awe and wonder when I look at God's creation. It fills me with awe and wonder. I am hoping to be blessed in life on God's earth that he created and not to be cursed on a wretched planet with no hope. God wants us to know that he loves us. His presence gives us hope. He watches over us and cares for our lives. When we search for him, he blesses us all. God is good and he gives us wisdom. God's wisdom can help us make the right choices if we choose wisely to listen to him. Wisdom from God comes from our God-given faith and faith is believing. Yes, our faith is established by God. There are many consequences in life based on the choices we make. And if we choose not to listen to God, we might not be so blessed. God does not want us to be lacking in anything. And God will provide all of our needs. God has given us the free will to choose and it is up to us to decide whether to follow or listen to him. But I choose to listen. I hear a voice speaking and I follow after God. When taking into consideration all I have observed in the world around me and after examining myself, my abilities, my incapabilities, for there are limitations on what I can and cannot do, I choose to do the sensible thing and have faith in God. My whole life I have been a believer and God has not forsaken me. I have always been blessed and I have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal and meaningful way and have come to know him as my savior, wretched man that I am in this worthless flesh, and yet I am forgiven. I have made the bad choices that go against all sound reasoning, wanting to fulfill the desires of the flesh I was lost in a world of darkness, 
and I base my emotions on my instincts and not on what my conscience should have told me. The consequences of living solely on instincts could be disastrous. If you lack faith, you might have an instinct to die or have a fear of death and just up around every corner you come to might be an unknown problem that you might face. The character that my conscience built was based on my emotions and set by my instincts in life with no direction or hope in the world. How disastrous my life would have ended up being before I met Jesus. Yes, God is good, and the Lord loves us all. Plan to meet your dreams and achieve your goals. Heaven is waiting, and for all the unanswered questions, the unknowns and knowns that are part of reality, a voice speaks, and God is that voice. Reality does not give us any real answers that we can cope with as to our existence. And we're just here existing without any faith if we don't have something to believe in. There is no hope in faith if we should believe in our own existence as simply being here with no explanation. What is the significance of believing or trusting in your own life? I believe we all have to have faith in something or someone. Our mothers and fathers brought us into this world and good parents take care of their children until they're old enough to go out on their own and take care of themselves. Regardless of our agreement or disagreement, there should be a distinction, an in-between for everyone to determine what is true and what is not. Before it's too late, we should refrain from debating who God is for the rest of our lives. Out of all the realities, the reality of everyday life is the most important one since our consciousness requires us to be completely aware and attentive to the experience of everyday life. Consciousness is the state of being aware of oneself and their surroundings. The ability to perceive the world through our senses, experiences, and memories through our self-awareness, levels of thought, inner voice, and perception. Setting all these things aside, let us take hold of the mystery of faith and listen to God's voice. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you take thought of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God and you crown him with glory and majesty. Psalms chapter eight, verses three through five. What are the benefits of hearing and listening to the voice of God? God speaks to us and directs us in the right direction, which will give us an advantage. Listen to him and hear his voice. Read the Bible. Reading the Bible is a way for us to learn about God. Acknowledge his love, develop a connection with his son Jesus, and acquire the ability to hear and recognize his voice. Being blessed can help us persevere and stay anchored in hope. 
When we believe in God, God gives us the reason to go on. Although we can't see him, he gives us faith. And blessings help us to continue in our faith. With faith, we can move mountains. Study the Bible, pray and believe, and meditate on the Lord. When you listen to God, he will show you the desires of your heart. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. James chapter 1, verse 5. God speaks to us in many ways. He speaks to us through his son, Jesus. The Holy Spirit was sent to lead us into all truth after Jesus was resurrected from the dead and ascended to heaven where he was seated with the Father. The Holy Spirit moves in our lives. The power of the Holy Spirit transforms our lives. He teaches us and helps us in our weakness. When we do not know what we ought to pray for, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us through wordless groans. The mind of the Spirit is known by God, who knows and searches our hearts, and intercedes for God's people in accordance with God's will. It is important for us to repent of our sins and ask for forgiveness. Be washed by the blood of Jesus who gave his life for us and receive the Holy Spirit. We should be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit as an act of obedience. Don't let pride hold you back and don't let anything including your conscience, stand in your way. Pay careful attention to what you have heard and don't drift away. Ask for guidance from the Lord in making decisions to receive direction and seek God in all things. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the words of Christ. Do not let kindness and truth lead you and keep them in your heart. Receive the word of God with gladness, not as the word of men, but as the word of God. Nothing is impossible with God. We are not ashamed of our hope in Christ because the Holy Spirit has poured God's love into our hearts. Prepare your heart to listen to the voice of God. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Psalms chapter 29 verses 3 and 4. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and they bear to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. God knows our hearts and the voice that is speaking on behalf of our lives is from God. And we should realize that we should trust in God and believe in the truth. There is a reward waiting for us, a life full of blessings and eternal life for all 
who believe. As the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding radiance. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and heard a voice speaking. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 28. Get your Bibles, get your pens and papers, and write down the scriptures you find to read at a later time as we turn in our Bibles simultaneously without flipping through the pages. Be looking for miracles, signs, and wonders, and let the Holy Spirit lead you and teach you through the Bible, which is the authoritative Word of God. Okay, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and I think I feel it right about here. I could be wrong by about 50 pages, but here we are at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let us check our archives. We, have, we haven't read that 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so let us begin. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. But there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the affecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all things, distributing them to each one individually, just as he wills. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, 
but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues, all are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healings, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. There it is, First Corinthians chapter 12, and it goes into chapter 13, the excellence of love. That is a still more excellent way. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, I heard a voice speaking, and it isn't coming from my hands or feet. Praise the Lord. Let's go to our next chapter. And I think I'm going to go this way. Oh, praise the Lord. Another miracle, sign and wonder. There we are, 1 Timothy, the introduction page. So turn the page, and there we are at chapter 1 once again. Lord, we thank you for another miracle, sign and wonder. In Jesus' name. Let us check our archives. Hello, brothers and sisters in the Lord. The good news is we haven't read anything from 1 Timothy. And last week we landed on James and 2 John. We didn't have nothing in James, and 2 John is only one chapter. I think maybe Philippians is the only chapter besides the four Gospels that we haven't landed on chapter 1. Let us read 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, according to the commandment of God our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, who is our hope, to Timothy, my true child, and the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you upon my departure for Macedonia, remain on at Ephesus so that you may instruct certain men not to teach strange doctrines, nor to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies which give rise to mere speculation rather than furthering the administration of God which is by faith. But the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. For some men straying from these things have turned aside to fruitless discussion, 
wanting to be teachers of the law, even though they did not understand either what they are saying or the matters about which they make confident assertions. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Realizing the fact that law is not made for a righteous person, but for those who are lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers and immoral men, and homosexuals and kidnappers and liars and perjurers and whatever else is contrary to sound teaching according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful putting me into service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor. Yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight, keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. Among these are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, so that they will be taught not to blaspheme. Okay, there it is. And we're going to honor the Lord here, the King Eternal. And what I see, verse 5, I heard a voice speaking. The goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Let us go to our next chapter, and I just believe I'm going to try and get at Philippians chapter 1. Can we do it? No. We didn't do it. But we're close. No. One page off. Galatians is not Ephesians. It is the introduction page, but we're at 2 Corinthians 13. Let's check our archives. We've read several chapters in 2 Corinthians, but not, we read 11 and, wait, 12 and 13, but not 10 and 11. So let's see here. We've got to go back pedaling a ways. Paul described this himself, chapter 10. And chapter 11, Paul depends his apostleship. Let us check if we could get this just right about here. No. Last page, one page short, it's 1 Thessalonians, from 2 Thessalonians, but 
The Lord has been leading us the last page, last week and this week, so we're going to read. I, I can't discern the Lord, but I, I like it. Paul defends his apostleship and not Paul describes himself. We were just talking about this. So, yes, we are going to read Paul describes himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now I, Paul, myself urge you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am meek when face to face with you, but bold toward you when absent. I ask that when I am present, I need not be bold with the confidence with which I propose to be courageous against some who regard us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And we are ready to punish all the disobedience whenever your obedience is complete. You are looking at things as they are outwardly. If anyone is confident in himself that he is Christ, let him consider this again within himself, that just as he is Christ, so also are we. For even if I boast somewhat further about our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for destroying you, I will not be put to shame. For well, I do not wish to seem as if I would terrify you by my letters. For they say his letters are weighty and strong, but his personal presence is unimpressive and his speech contemptible. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in word by letters, when absent, such persons we are also indeed, when present. For we are not bold to class or compare ourselves with some of those who commend themselves. But when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are without understanding. But we will not boast beyond our measure, but within the measure of the spear, which God apportioned to us as a measure to reach even as far as you. For we are not overextending ourselves as if we did not reach to you, for we were the first to come even as far as you in the gospel of Christ, not boasting beyond our measure, that is, in other men's labors, but with the hope that as your faith grows, we will be within our sphere, enlarged even more by you, so as to preach the gospel even to the regions beyond you, and not to boast in what has been accomplished in the sphere of another, but he who boasts is to boast in the Lord, for it is not he who commends himself that is approved, but he whom the Lord commends. Okay, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I look at that and I think to myself, I heard a voice speaking, and uh, we need to do chapter 5. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That is verse 5. All right, let's close our Bibles. That's all for today.
I'd like to invite you all out to truevinebranches.net, Christian Fellowship Social Media Network. I welcome you to come create your profiles. Come join us. Let us end with prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time together, another miracle sign and wonder. We thank you for your blessings and bountiful gifts poured out upon our lives. Please protect all of God's children. Our brothers and sisters in the Lord, be our shield and protector. Lord, bless us all, keep us safe, heal us, keep us well, provide for our needs, and may we all bless you, Lord. I am with the blessings that we receive. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.